Welcome to Perceptions Today podcast, where we discuss consciousness in all forms. December 2021, Episode 3, Anthony Peake's Roundtable with the Public, Part 3 of 7. He is a writer who deals with the borderline areas of human consciousness. Yeah, no, it's, it was super exciting. I'm not surprised that Anthony is uh, so excited to get in touch with you and uh, the community that you've created. It's really exciting. Can I introduce you to my co-host, Melissa? She's down there in Australia. She's spending some time open. Hi, I'm sitting here with a big hi. I'm sitting here with a big smile on my face. I'm so glad you finally got to come in. This is an instance of the conversation coming up in the roundtable discussion. Participants knew it was being recorded. Yeah, I think there's some glitches going on with Twitter again. I got messages coming in from here. So that's you saying that you got problems. And also, we got Renegade. Excellent. You've tweeted, retweeted that. Thank you very much. Right. We might just go to 10 past and then sort that one out. While we're in here, we could just have a little communication chat. Everybody take, everybody take their selves off mute. And I just want to see what it goes like if we had loads of people talking at the same time. <laughs> well, I'm very well, excited. Like <laughs> well, I'm very well, excited. Most of us are probably pretty talking to begin with if we're on this fast. That's good. Oh, greetings from Australia. Superb. Thank oh, you very much. Mark, I'm from Australia as well. Oh, cool. We're about on Sydney. Oh, I'm up in Brizzy. Oh, are you? Yeah. And where's, it, where's this being broadcasted from? We're going from the UK as the main host. Nice. I'm in California. Excellent. That's good. We've spoken before on accounts talking about the holographic universe. If you're the same John Hudson who changed his yes. icon from wearing a hat. Yes, yes. No, no, I, I should know. It's good to meet you. See you again. Yes, no, that is me. Yeah, this is just for Halloween fun. That's fine. That's not a problem. It's just sometimes when people change pictures and names, they come in and go, why don't you recognize me? And I go, well, all your identity has kind of slipped. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> How am I meant it's, to know? It's funny because it's actually caused me some problems. because I have a news show that I do uh, three times a week. And I'm always in that hat. And so now everyone's like, well, you know, what's going on with the hat? And I'm like, really? Like, isn't it about what I say? But no, everyone seems to be more focused on the hat. <laughs> uh, Anthony, have you heard that about research like that? You just change one thing and suddenly it's not about what you can actually do. It's about the clothes or something you're wearing. That's not a good way for everyone to look at the world. Yeah, it really. certainly isn't. <laughs> it's the egregorial world. It's something okay. I'll be talking about in my next book. According to this, I have 10 people in the room. So we've got four at the top. That's eight. And yeah, because obviously it's counting myself. That's good. Now, Daisy, could you, do you want to talk? I'm sending you an invite. I don't know what's, if you use the fist symbol, I know you don't want to talk. 10 seconds delay as it goes through the world. Sometimes we will have overlap today and we will have laughter as well. It's the way that we do these things. Great. You don't want to talk. Gotcha. I'm, I won't be asking questions again if you want to send in a question we will be saying that you can do it by either tweeting anthony or by sending in a direct message but we'll go over those bits okay i know we've got two hours so if everybody is quite happy because you're all in here all the people that know you and see you actually in a room they can follow in so they might come in at different times and we might be repeating things if that's all okay with yourselves it will just be public service announcements either icons or come off speaker for the time being to just tell me. Yeah, it's fine. Okie dokie. So, are you all set, Melissa? Yes. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> right, okay. I can tell. <laughs> Too many coffees, up at 3.30, just so excited. <laughs> Shh, no giggling from the crowd. All right, well, you can. Last time we had it, it was all kind of uh, welcome disaster. I think I right. just realized I'm, I'm the only, oh no, Daisy. I was going to say, am I the only female in this room? But Daisy would be female too. It's okay. She is, yeah. She's coming live from America as well, which is good. Okay, so everybody, are we quite happy about the fact we've had so much information shared? No, we haven't. no idea. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Oh, no problem. As you heard, he's going to be giving more opportunities with talking with us, which is great. So that means if you tell people, they will be able to come as well when we have more things planned in the future. But this is very nice to have an impromptu one 
from the fact that he just based it on all the experience that was coming through and the knowledge that people were sharing. So this has just been amazing. I think Melissa will say the same. Uh, and th this has been outstanding. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Absolutely. And, and I'm glad, I'm glad Anthony's um, suggested to come back as well, because I'm um, just looking in the room. I can see now it's filling up a lot more as well, which is awesome. Excellent. And everyone, thank you so much for, uh, for coming through today or tonight. It, it was great <laughs> Wherever we are. Was here and, and that everybody had um, some great questions as well, because there was some awesome um, discussions going on. I, really... I would like one thing to show our appreciation to Anthony. You've seen his actual Twitter account, haven't you, everybody? If you take the two tags, which are at the pinned one at the moment on my account, which says Perceptions Today Events, Perceptions Today Community, take those two, put a comment in a tweet to Anthony so he knows where it comes from, so he knows it's this community that's building rapidly, and either express <laughs> gratitude or just pass some more information to him. That would be great. At 2.30, we're having another session with Anthony Peake. He's done a spontaneous one. He enjoyed the conversation here so much that we'll be putting out social media links. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for your time. And once again, thank See you to my co-host. Thank you. See you, everyone. I look forward to seeing everyone in a few hours. Greybeard, yes. good afternoon. Sorry, I was talking in my, and I was on mute. <laughs> That's fine. You can try and do that. It'll help me out. We're just checking with button issues, Greybeard, see if you are okay. Oh, good, you can speak, good. We're on record, by the way, at this present time, just checking. Greybeard, just can you give me an audio check? Thank you. Yep, testing, testing, one, two. Glad you enjoyed this morning. This has been very unexpected. No, that was excellent. Uh, you know, I've never heard of Anthony Peake in, until you had mentioned him previously to me. But yeah, like I said, I haven't had a chance to read all of his books, but I listened to about three or so of his interviews and checked out his website and you did, his YouTube channel. Yeah, you did do the video that I mentioned last week to look at. Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah, so that's a good bit. Did you feel that your question was answered or would you like me to direct him back to that? Uh, it was answered sufficiently. Um, honestly, I was hoping for a little bit more. No, I can ask him I'm to go sure. back. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to delve too much into. It. I was just curious if you had more data, you know, maybe even science, like on how the medication affects that. You know, you know, specifically how the medication interacts with the brain and how that maybe prohibits communication with the daemon. Again, you probably saw the Karen uh, Myron Dahl's video that I sent around at one stage about the guy with epilepsy who had the three days in a coma when he was four. And he's a painter and sculptor, but I'm not sure if he would know about the medication section, Anthony. But uh, Gabe, are you a listener today? If you're just a listener, just give me the peace symbol. Or if you can actually talk, talk. Ah, excellent. Oh, Wandering is here as well. Yeah, she's got a new phone. Excellent. I would like to do an audio check with yourself. Stephanie. Once you get the connection. Oh, no, you might just be a listener. If you can't speak, just give me the peace symbol from the bottom icons under the heart. Gabe said that he can't speak. So Okay, that's fine. I haven't seen any icons turn up. Maybe I didn't do it quick enough to Stephanie. If you're outside listening, then hopefully pick up because it'd be nice to... Have a quick word with you. No, <gasps> Good afternoon. Hello. Right. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear Superb. me? Superb. Oh, yeah, you're okay. fine. You're loud and clear. Excellent. Okay. Would you like to get a question in? Because obviously I've been waiting to you, <laughs> to Anthony. Um. I, I, this is terrible because um, I've been uh, trying to think of a question in my mind. Well, I can just away. introduce you and about the kind of work that you do and your research. And you can just introduce yourself in like a 30 second. This is my public service announcement. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, I'll no, do it for I you. Just, 
Yeah, no, either way, it's fun. I just, um, you know, I'm so fascinated by the uh, focus on consciousness and then uh, synchronicity as a way into finding more about how meaning expresses through these uh, various uh, ways in our lives and, and what that says about consciousness and how the universe is created. So that's kind of my jam. So, yeah, no, it's, it was super exciting. I'm not surprised that Anthony is uh, so excited to get in touch with you and uh, the community that you've created. It's really exciting. Can I introduce you to my co-host, Melissa? She's down there in Australia. She's spending some time open. Hi, I'm Melissa. sitting here with a big hi. I'm sitting here with a big smile on my face. I'm so glad you finally got to come in, and um, we got to hear your voice as well. <laughs> well, it's funny. My mom's been uh, uh, on me to buy me a new phone for like literally about five years, and I finally broke down. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just like an old kind of you know grungy phone. So. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Anthony's in the room. Great to have you in. Excellent. I've approved him though. Ah, oh, I probably have to do it the other way around. Here we go. And then transfer him to co-host. You keep an eye on the rest of them at the moment. I'll make sure that Anthony gets his co-host invite. Hi guys. Which... Hi guys. Afternoon. That's Hi. interesting. Either you're saying it twice. Because the first time he came in and said something, it came in twice. And that went in twice as well. Oh, Have really? you got a just... just the once, ever. Could you tell me whether you got the co-host invitation that I've just sent you? Yes. Excellent. Once that's done, that means we can have 10 people in for questions and answer. Lucky enough, one of my friends here is Wandering Britches, and she is into sex magic and also synchronicities. And she has a wonderful blog, which she will introduce herself to in a minute. And uh, wandering, we're recording Wandering, at the wandering Britches. Now, doesn't Excellent. That focus some amazing <laughs> images. She's over there in Napa Valley. Really? Oh, wine country. Very nice. Although you've had quite a lot of fires there recently, did I hear? Oh, God, since 2017, um, my mom, I had been living down in the East Bay near uh, Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek, in the San Francisco Bay area for, uh, while I grew up there. And my mom had lived in Napa, and then she ended up um, breaking her back, as it turned out. They were able to fix it, but uh, so I, I, she was in a bad way, so I came up and I started living with her to take care of her, and I've been living with her since. And then that fall was when they had the first uh, bad firestorms here. And uh, yeah, it's been real crazy. So far this year, we, we ha it's been so much easier for us and it's, we've been really been appreciating it. But um, one thing I've noticed that you might find interesting is that, because I am interested in synchronicities, there tend to be a, a lot of synchronicities that come up really strongly around the times when we have these firestorms. And it makes me wonder because you know, a lot, well, we had one uh, 2019 in the fall where there was like 3 million people had their power cut off as a prophylactic oh, for days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm mean, huge. You would have to drive like over an hour to get anywhere with power from where we were living. And um, these gusts of wind, like up to 100 miles per hour. And um, but I noticed that there were a lot of like really strange, odd synchronicities coming up around those times and other times when there's firestorms. So it makes me wonder, everyone's going to be focused on the same thing. They're going to be very hyped up emotionally. And then the physical conditions are very different because we don't have like the power grid and you have it's really dry, a lot of static electricity. So it, I don't know, to me, I've been, you know, trying to tease out some of what might be going on in the conditions that make it possible and consciousness and stuff and uh, to me it's really striking that um it kind of centers around these uh meteorological events mm -hmm. elemental events so by, by the way how am i sounding somebody just tried to bring me on my laptop and i i dropped I, my bluetooth dropped off um am i sounding okay oh yeah oh that's good okay okay because i don't need the headphones <laughs> then which is good yeah but anyway, yeah, it's just nice to meet you. It's nice to meet everyone here in this space. I, I just, uh, my mom just got me a new phone so I could actually join in as a, a talker, not just a listener. So hi, everyone. Stephanie, could I just yes. pause you for a second? I I'm forgot sure. to take myself off mute. Anthony, your actual headset, when you're talking now, is slightly more echoey than it was this morning. So yeah, if you're now, what I'll friends... do is I'll go back onto Bluetooth, my Bluetooth headset. It's just something yeah. to ring me on my back for some reason and it dropped. Okay. That's well, fine. I'll, I'll, re, I'll relink now. Just hold on. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere at the moment. Tamara, have you got speaker access? Can we hear your... Uh, so tones? far. So far. 
Oh, this is beautiful. All the community <laughs> is coming together. Welcome, everyone. We're still recording, by the way, just because we're testing. We haven't gone into full mode of talking, but it's great. Estevelle, I presume. And where are we? Oh, excellent. Nice to see you, Daisy, again. That's good. We've got people coming in from this morning. Oh, this is sweet. Excellent. Thank you very much for turning up and taking the time out of your day to do this. Da -da -da. Oh, and again, Krista right. DeMeo. Thank you very much for turning up. That's great. Um, a question that was sent to me, or sent to me, which was asked to me by Greybeard, would you know any more about the actual medications with temporal lobe epilepsy and how it might be restricting access to the daemon? I don't know if you had more of an answer for that previously or not. Uh, other than um, I have associates who experience temporal lobe epilepsy and have said that they feel that they're being almost muted and the medication sometimes stops their perceptions but i would always strongly advise that you know normally physicians know what they're doing and you know to come off medication when you've been given it is probably not the greatest of ideas uh, but it does seem that you need that kind of strange configuration in your brain to actually open up the doors in some way um, but it's not an area i've pursued in any great detail but i do know people who have Okay. All right. This is good. People seem to be filling in. People are talking about the event on Twitter, which is good. And... We've got some questions. Um, I didn't see if Greybeard was first or only. I was looking at a different screen. Okay. Sorry. Um, Greybeard, did you want to go? Since it was your question. Oh, sure. Um, I was just curious, Anthony, if you would expand a little more. I'm wondering... Uh, I myself suffer from epilepsy, so I, I take the medicine. That's that's why I'm asking. Um, I, I'm curious if you've ever heard of possibly the daemon maybe reaching out to people in other ways. Say if you did have an inhibitor, like if you were being suppressed through medication, uh, have you ever heard of instances where maybe you were reached through different methods rather than uh, instead of being an antenna? Um well, I'd argue that there is considerable evidence that the daemon communicates in so many different channels. It really depends on how open the doors of perception are for the daemon to communicate. So, for instance, in terms of neurotypicals, the daemon can only really communicate, as far as my research tells me, is through inklings or sensations or feelings that something feels right or wrong. You know, so, for instance, you meet somebody for the first time and you have this natural antipathy towards them or a natural attraction and I think that's the daemon giving you that feeling because of course the, even the word inkling if you look back to the actual meaning of that word that is literally what it means it means a, a hidden feeling that you have um, so in fact uh, J.W. Tolkien and his associates um, in the 1930s when they were writing were known as the inklings uh, which I thought was quite interesting because I argue that in many ways um, a good deal of um, written material and inspirational material is daemon orientated. Again, you guys may or may not be aware, but I wrote a biography of the American science fiction writer Philip K. Dick uh, called the man, the man Who Remembered the Future. And in this, I give many examples of how he was seemingly being fed information from his own future. And the only source that I could argue that was would be the daemon. And of course, in my book, A Daemon, The Guide to Your Extraordinary Secret Self, I give scores of examples of, of writers, artists, um, poets, who all felt that the daemon was inspiring them. For instance, you're probably aware that Alfred Lord Tennyson the British poet were experienced epilepsy and he writes in many of his poems um, precognitions deja vu sensations as well so that's it for, neuro for neurotypicals but then when you get to people like myself in terms of um, classic migraine I think then the messages are, are, are more precise and they can communicate more directly and in many cases, I think the temporal lobe epilepsy, the communication channels are really quite effective. 
and I'm hoping again, maybe, you know, at some time in the future, we could get uh, Myron Dial on here because he's the classic example of somebody who really has looked into his own demonic communications. Um, again, quite interesting as an aside here, uh, Rudyard Kipling, the British writer, um, in his autobiography called Something of Me, um, he describes how he, a lot of his short stories were created by his daemon. He actually calls it his daemon as well. And he gave one fascinating example when he was writing a story called The Old Men of Pevensey, which can be found in his anthology work, uh, I think it's Pook of Pook's Corner. And in the story, he has a group of, uh, he has two old men living in Pevensey Castle on the Sussex coast during the Norman invasions, 1066. And in the story, he ends up placing the two men inside um, a round tower within the castle. Um, and they're trapped and they have some treasure that they need to uh, get out of the castle. And like many writers, he got himself stuck. He didn't know where to go with the story. So he goes for a walk in the gardens of his house, a beautiful house called Bateman's, which is only about 20 miles away from where I'm speaking now. And while he was walking in the garden, he describes how the daemon came to him. And the daemon turned around to him and said, it literally said to him, um, I've got a solution to your problem with the old men of Pevensey. What I suggest you do is you make out that they discover um, a sea well in the wall of the tower and they break through and then they're able to climb down and then they're able to go into the moat because there's a boat at the bottom of the sea, the sea well. Now, he turns around to the daemon and he says, but there are no sea well, there is not, no structures like that in Pevensey. And the daemon just said, oh, just go, with, go ahead with it, it'll work. And this is what he wrote in the book. Some of the region of 10 years later, there were archeological excavations made in Pevensey Castle and they found sea well in exactly the location the daemon said it would be in the castle. And as Kipling, he said, himself says, he said, how could that possibly be? How did my daemon know that? And the argument is the daemon knew that because the daemon had already lived Kipling's life before and had in a previous life read that news article and back inf informed his, his Edelon to write it in the story. Which is fascinating. Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> You've just blown me away. Um, I think Oni had a question as well. Uh, how are you? How are you guys? How are you guys this afternoon? Uh, my my story is like it's quite interesting. Uh, I'll put it this way: uh, I'm a self-taught engineer. Uh, uh, when I discovered the certain things in uh, technology, it was like uh, I had there's somebody that talks to me, like uh, about the uh, the move of of things, especially in technology. Like I don't know how can I put it. Like uh, there's somebody that tell me things, and that is why like you'll wonder why like uh, I'm now like in in certain technology. Whereby, 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 like uh, some of my people in Africa, like uh, they, they are not there yet, and uh, yet I'm there. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, there's uh, somebody that talked to me about like uh, uh, the move in, in blockchain, cryptocurrency, in technology, everywhere. Like what I do is like. Sometimes, like when I sit, like I'll I'll hear something like you know when you tune in like a, an old radio, like uh, you know that old radio, like when you change the station, you'll hear like shh. So it's like I'll hear something like that. So now my question like is like white noise, like white noise? Uh, you know, like when you when you shift the radio, like if you take an old radio. And all three. Yeah, that would be considered kind of white noise, the static yeah. sound that you're getting with that. It's basically in between the channels. Yeah, it's in between the channels. The channel. yeah. It happens not it happens like sometime, not all all the time, but it happens sometime. Especially when I wake up, like I'll hear it. So now my question is if it happens that uh, I 
I switch in another world without knowing that I switched. How will I get back? Like, that's the thing. I don't want to be in the state where my mom is. If it happens, like, I happen to be in that position where, by, like, uh, I'm exposed to a lot of noises. What's going to happen? Well, I, I can't really answer that in that I, I, I don't know. But if we're talking here about a, a set of circumstances that's generally known as an out-of-body experience, where you go into an altered state of consciousness and you experience another place or you, you end up in another place. I know of many people who this happens to, and I've yet to discover anybody who's had any problems in getting back, if that makes sense. Because what I would argue it is, it's almost a, a parallel perceptual universe that you go into. Now, I don't know if you only or everybody else has heard of the concept known as hypnagogic imagery and hypnopompic imagery. But this is that state you have when you are between awake and asleep. You know, when you wake up and or just as you're going to sleep, you will see images outside of yourself. Uh, ordinarily, it starts usually um, with people in profile or you will hear whispering voices around you and the faces in profile will move around. Now, what is curious about, and I get hypnagogic imagery and hypnopompic imagery, the, the technology, te technical terms, by the way, hypno hypnopompic imagery is when you're waking up, as you come into waking up, and hypnag hypnagogic is when you're just going to sleep. And these states seem to be v images and visuals that are not being created by your own subconscious or indeed your conscious mind. They seem to have independence of you. Uh, and the entities or the people you see in those circumstances also seem to have independence of you. I'll give an example. The first time it happened to me, I was at work and I was working on my computer and suddenly everything changed around me. And I was looking down from a tree at an elderly man reading a newspaper. And then I heard the sound of a siren and I looked up. And in front of me was a square, a kind of green, green space in the city centre. And on one far side of the square was an ambulance going round. And I instinctively knew that it was somewhere in Latin America. I suspect it was Buenos Aires, but I, I don't know why I know that. But these images, when they come, it's almost like they sneak up on you. In other words, they seem to come from your one of your extreme visual fields. And you've got to wait until they come into full view and then look at them. Because if you just look at them directly, they'll fade away. It's as if you seem to fool them into coming in. And then I came to, and I thought that was extraordinary. And then a week later, it similarly happened. And this time, I was looking through a glass table at an elderly woman putting down a cup of coffee onto a glass table. And I think the first viewpoint was from the a viewpoint of a bird. And the second one, I think, was possibly... Um, the viewpoint of a cat or, or a lap dog or something. Now, these images are so powerful, I can see them in my mind's eye now. And in my books, I discuss hypnagogic and hypnopompic imagery a lot because I believe people whose doors of perception are more open, they can enter that world that they see. Whereas neurotypicals and people like myself with classical migraine, we, we stay embodied. Whereas people like Oni or other individuals that experience go into that world. Now, I have friends who are working on this at the moment. Now, whether they are lucid dreams or whether they are out of body experiences is a big discussion. Because a lucid dream is when you are dreaming and you become aware of the fact you're dreaming. And again, that's only happened to me once. And it was the most extraordinary experience where I was dreaming and when I was younger, I used to go to nightclubs a lot and things. And in the dream, I'm in a nightclub and I walk out the nightclub in the dream and I'm walking down an alleyway at the back of the nightclub. And suddenly I thought, what am I in a nightclub? I'm lying in bed. And then I realized I was dreaming. But then I realized I was me in a dream. And I thought, wow, this means I'm in a lucid dream. Again, if anybody's seen the movie Inception, which is based on, on lucid dreaming, the um, uh, Christopher Nolan movie. So 
I decided, I thought, what do I need to do? And I thought, well, when you're in lucid dream states, you're supposed to be able to fly. So I tried to rise myself up and I fell and I banged my, my knees on the ground. And then I tried again and suddenly I found myself rising up and I rose up and I flew over the back wall of the alleyway to find myself looking out over this incredible bay. It was late at night and there were lights running around the edge of the bay and there were cars driving along. I could see their headlights. Now I'm flying and I could feel the wind on my arms and on my legs as I was flying. And then I woke up. And it was one of the most extraordinary experiences I think I've ever had. So it seems that we have an ability to go somewhere else. And again, if anybody's interested in research on this, I, you can do far worse than reading the writings of somebody called Robert Wagoner, who I've interviewed on my show. If you're interested, if you want to go onto my Facebook, uh, my YouTube site, just look at Anthony Peak Robert Wagoner. Um, there is also um, um, uh, Graham Nichols, who I mentioned earlier on, who works on this, but he's more interested in out of the body experiences. And of course, the writings of the, the great Robert Monroe, um, who wrote a book called Journeys Out of the Body, and in fact founded the Monroe Institute, which exists in, um, in, in West Virginia in America, and they train people. And also, again, if anybody's interested in being trained on this, there's the International Association um, of con uh, Consciousness Studies or something like that. Just a quick one on this. Could you give the story about the hat? Monroe Mon oh, Institute and the hat. That's oh, great. Oh, when he's flying? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Robert Wagner um, described how the first time he realized that these entities that you encounter in dream states are not just figments of your imagination or populating your dreams. And rather like I described, I was flying in my lucid dream. He was flying in his lucid dream. And there are a lot of people w below him with, you know, sort of stovepipe hats, the kind of hats they used to have in Victorian times. And Robert's flying along and he decides that he wants to knock the hats off because he thinks it's a bit of fun. And he starts knocking the hats off until one of the one of the, the beings in front of him grabs the rim of the hat to hold it on. To stop him knocking the hat off. And this was a real wake up call to Robert because suddenly he realized that whatever this being was, it was aware of what he was doing. And was reacting against it. Now, that's important, and it's particularly important. Um, I don't know if um, uh, our friend Mr. Voot is here, but one of his, I think... He's, he's just walked in the door. He's just walked in the door. Oh, well, he's probably... Synchronicity. <laughs> synchronicity writ large. Um, he may be aware of the work of um, Carl, Carl Smith, um, who is a researcher in virtual realities, virtual reality headsets, but also he's a member of the team that's doing research at Imperial College in London into dimethyltryptamine. And in one of his interviews with me, and when we've met, he told me this tale. Now, what is happening is he and a group of people are volunteering to take DMT and then describe what happens to them. And they all go into alternate universes, alternate spaces. And this guy gets out of his body uh, in, in the, the DMT state finds himself in something called the DMT cage. I haven't told you guys this one before, have I? Because I mentioned this in a recent interview. It's no, a... you haven't actually mentioned it. Can I just check to see if RN Vu can actually hear us? I know he's got several things happening where he is. He might just be tuning in as a radio station at this present time. Um, RN Vu, if you can get hold of the invite and let me know whether you're just available or not. It takes a while for the invite to go out. It takes a while for them to accept. And yes, he is. He's now a speaker. Can you check your audio with us, please? And everybody in the room, we are recording this for uh, test purposes. So when questions are posed, if they can be brief, the same with like a 30-second introduction of yourself, where you're from, also basically where your Twitter handle is, so we can log it back when we look over the actual audio file, basically what platforms or social media that you actually follow Anthony Peake on, those are the kind of things that we're looking for. Richard, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me clearly? Superbly well, better than the last time. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm all ears as well. I do apologise for my lack of um, yeah connection with regards to the current flow um, of discussion, but just regarding um, what Anthony said with regards to 
uh, excuse me, um, Carl and the, um, oh, you there? It just pat out of my end. We're all here. Oh, I do apologize. I do That's apologize. Okay, don't worry. Yeah, Anytime it's, it's, you think you're lost, lost audio, please do check with us. It's worse than you just sitting there talking to yourself. Well, the Dreaming Jaguars are actually looking to drop a um, an interview with um, Carl Smith this weekend on their um, YouTube channel as well, which we're extremely looking forward to. And part two of the interview will be actually taking place within the next couple of weeks. So there's uh, a lot to look forward to. That's excellent because Carl's experiences in the DMT space, as you know, because he... Um, Tate took the DMT and found himself in the DMT space and an entity came over to him and said, you shouldn't be doing it this way. Do not do it this way. Carl then comes back into our consensual reality and says that one of the entities spoke to me. Um, and he then goes back two weeks later and the same entity came over and said, I told you last time you shouldn't do it this way. Which again for Carl was convincing to him that this entity seemed to have independence of him. And not only that, was telling him things that he didn't want to hear really. So this means these beings do have, they are not us. And my latest book and my latest work is on um, something I'm calling called the egregorial concept. And I'm trying to understand exactly when we, when we, when we come across these entities, are they independent of us? Are they figments of our imagination or are they a bit of both? On that pause that you've got there, Gabe has also got a question followed by esoteric. If Again, just if you want to do the introduction of yourself, as I mentioned before, keep it brief because obviously the room is filling up nicely. And please do check out RN Voot's books and also look for podcasts with him on and also his Instagram page and other places. We also have got another good podcast host who can't unfortunately speak at the moment is The Natural Born Alchemist. Again, find out his podcast. You'll find a load that you will like. And again, we also have T-Rex Obvious continuing the conversation, who is also in the house, which is nice to see a lot of podcast people coming in. So I will now go back to you, Anthony, so that you can address the questions of Gabe and Esoteric. Richard, did I cut you off, by the way, because I saw you come off and on speaker? No, not at all. Please continue. Thank you. Okay, fire away the next questions then. Okay, yeah, uh, this is Gabriel. Um, I'm from uh, North Carolina, originally from uh, New York City. Um, yeah, my, my, my question or my input was, um, yes, I've, I've uh, experienced um, that part of the beings interacting with you in the dreams. And um, it happened one time where I wasn't sure what was going on during the dream. I would see a little child run, uh, uh, run by me. And I decided to uh, pause the scene in my mind. And when I did that, the uh, being got angry, it reverted back to its normal form, which is, uh, which is the uh, daemon that, I, that I've named Tricky. And he threw me down into a chair and, <laughs> and told me just a, a, a diatribe of, uh, uh, you don't know what you're doing. You're not supposed to do this. And um, I, I guess since I exhibited some sort of control over it, in pausing the scene during the dream, it, it reacted. So I, I just found that interesting that um, that, that is a, an actual experience. That is indeed fascinating, isn't it? So again, it shows to me that there seems to be a direct relationship with our perception of these entities and their existence. Now, again, within quantum physics, there's something called the collapse of the wave function, whereby the act of a measurement of a subatomic particle makes it change from being a statistical wave, that is a mathematical wave function whereby it could be located anywhere in the universe, to reducing down to a point particle in a particular location in time and space. And modern quantum physics has long had this issue with this, what it's called the observer problem, because it suggests that in some way, observation brings about reality. Now, I'm expanding that, and I have a in my new, latest book, I will have a section on what I call egregorial subatomic particles, and I call them egregorials, that seem to also come about by the anticipation of scientists. I mean, there was a famous case many years ago when a group of scientists were trying to discover an object called the muon, and they anticipated where it would be, but it was almost, they, 
they just kind of guessed where it was going to be. And one day it appeared. And uh, one of the researchers by the name, name of E.E. E. Rabbi, who was a Nobel Prize winner, turned around and said, who ordered that? Indeed, giving the impression that we think about things in the subatomic world and they come into existence. Now, if this is the case, this means that consciousness is prime. Consciousness is what brings about from the information field, which I'll go into later, into three-dimensional reality in some way. Now, if other entities can similarly be created by us, but have independence of us, this brings about a lot of interesting questions about poltergeist activity, about alien greys, and um, an associate of mine called Paul Eno, who is a researcher into psychic phenomena. He's an ex-Roman Catholic priest, and he's a researcher into psychic phenomena in uh, Rhode Island in the USA. And he argues that these entities seem to use us to come through from somewhere else. And they, they create themselves out of plasma. Now, this is very intriguing, because if they do, um, it's something that goes back even to uh, the Quran, because in the Quran, it says that human beings were made out of mud, angels were made out of fire, and the jinn were made out of smokeless fire. Now, smokeless fire is a very interesting description of what we would call plasma, because plasma is another form of matter. It is what is found around stars. It's a very interesting and it flows and everything else. And could this be the explanation for such things as um, mind formed entities? Uh, you know, for instance, the, the way the Tibetans have the ideas of a tulpa. And could it be that these things we create in some way and we create them in our dreams, but they gain independence of us. They are part of us, but not. But just to finish off, that if we are one consciousness experiencing it sub subjectively, Everything is indeed us. We are all us. We are all ourselves. We're all part of a greater something that is, is self-aware in some way. And we're just parts of it. We are embodied parts of it within the simulation. And this is where I'm going with my new book. It's almost like bootstraps. You know, we are pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. We're creating the reality around us. And it's malleable under certain circumstances. I mean, I noticed somebody who's in the group at the moment is, is Susan Demeter, who is... I was just about to point her out that you know her and she's I, just popped in. because I know Susan really well, in. and Susan has done some astonishing work on, on, on entities, fairies, and, uh, um, imps, this kind of thing. And maybe at some stage she can tell us a little bit about this, because this really is a hall of mirrors. And it's far more interesting than just the nonsense we have from New Age people. This is far more interesting. We bring in the science. It starts to get very, very intriguing. So, Gabe, thanks for that. Uh, there was another Just question. Just going to have to pause you one second, sorry, because I didn't get the opportunity to do the public service announcement. Okay. Sometimes Twitter is a f flaky kind of environment, and our actual rooms have collapsed before. So if you would like to follow Perceptions Today account and also Centred Awareness and also Anthony, if the room does collapse, we will send out another tweet and at least you'll be able to find the room again. Okay. And again, if you don't like the conversation that we're having here, once you've done all that, you can unfollow us later on. There is no need to follow for a continuous time. So that's the end of my public service announcement. To help our research and understanding, leave Perceptions Today's podcast reviews, subscribe to the podcast, along with the other social media accounts and share. Come and join our live events. That way we can get together and have thoughtful discussions along with advancing our understanding of concepts as we go along.